So essentially guys, when I'm coming out, um, and I'm going on a trip, whether it be one day for the day, or I'm gonna be going for uh, multiple days, I'm gonna have a typical loadout on me that I'm gonna carry for the most part, just about every time I go. Some of these things are gonna be uh, specific towards uh, mining, hunting, uh, artifact sites, or uh, as well, just actual hunting of animals and scouting and things like that that I do throughout the season as well. So uh, the first thing I'll touch on would be, um, let's start off with the big one, the pistol. So it's a Glock 17 9 millimeter. nothing big, nothing special. The only reason I have it is for protection. Um, some of the most dangerous things you can find out here in the woods, especially in Sierra Nevada, would be humans. Um, a lot of legal grow operations and such like that. So you walk up on them guys, they don't want to be found. Uh, it can always be a sketchy situation depending on how they want to handle it, where they're from, and uh, how far they're willing to take it to, to make sure they go home. Because you just, you know, it's just, I've done it before. I've ran into it and stuff, and it just puts the hair on the back of your neck up. So um, as well as animals, uh, we have a lot of cats out here, and we're not hunting them anymore. So there's a lot of young males that don't have territory. They're hungry and are looking for their own hunting grounds. Um, and so it, it's just something good to have. If you're gonna be out here, you might as well have it. I always carry it on this battle belt here. Um, seems a little extreme. So uh, this is set up for obviously more than just going out here, but I keep an IFAC on the back. Um, you never know when you're gonna need it. And multiple redundancies is always good. Two is one, one is none, three is better than anything. Uh, a tourniquet and then my uh, exterior holster for my pistol that way if I do get seen walked up on by game wardens or something they know I have it right away uh, and we can just forego any uh, inconveniences with that happening uh, the secondary item that I'm gonna have that's on me all the time when I go out here is gonna be my chest rig now I choose a chest rig it uh, holds a GoPro pretty well holds Kim lights knives multiple knives um, I have a cottontail call in here uh, it's got two pouches in the front, which will carry admin items and stuff. Um, bear spray, which is always good. Keep it accessible. Um, and then, you know, it's it's got a kangaroo pouch down here, which will hold binoculars uh, that I did not bring with me. Always, you always forget something. And then uh, the front part of this will carry a face mask. And the bottom has a tourniquet on it. So there's, you know, again, multiple redundancies. Uh, gonna have multiple items all the time. You, you know, you, you, you're gonna lose things. Things are gonna get caught on stuff. You're not gonna notice it. Um, some of the dumbest stuff has happened to me while I'm out here. So I've I've learned to just have more than one. So that way, when you go, you know, you don't gotta go looking for it when you lose it. Um, following into that would be like these face masks. So I like to wear, you know, a little baklava style face mask, um, especially when it's cold in the morning. Uh, when it gets real sunny, I keep a boonie hat. This one happens to be in the a Max 4 HD duck hunting camo, but. Uh, you know any camo would do when it's really sunny out these things are, are worth their weight in gold um, and That doubles up in the back. I have a, a shemog, you know when it's really sunny and stuff to keep the sun off your neck um, And it works you can use it to make a sling uh, tie stuff off. I mean, it's really these are invaluable um, Socks because water motrin and socks you can't go wrong uh, and then, uh, you know, from, from going there, I'm going to have extra chem lights that I'll keep in the bag. These are really big for mine hunting. Um, whenever I go to an intersection, I drop one, all right? Depending on the color I drop, will tell me where I started, where I went. Um, these things are really useful tools. These are good for 12 hours if all your flashlights go dead for whatever reason. This will not fail for the most part. Um, I do find duds every now and then. I don't get the good Silum ones because they're just too expensive. So I get the cheap party packs. Um, the colors vary and they're not always that bright. But uh, you can pay the good money uh, in my ready bag, my, my go bag if the world hits a, a shitter kind of thing. Um, I have the Silum ones that are like 10% or whatever Silum. They're like super bright. It's it's um, what the big boys use overseas. So, um, and then going from there, I'm gonna have gators, right? This is another piece of preparedness gear. Out here, we have quite a bit of rattlesnakes in the north, and in the south of California, we have even more. So, uh, you know, babies, uh, you, you really can't hear them. Um, the ass bell on a nope rope isn't always that loud. Uh, so I, I keep these, you know. Typically, the dog will come smashing through first, piss it off real good, and by the time I get there, it's ready to strike. Um, and going into mines every now and then, 
you know, you find one where they're dinning in that location because of how cool it is or whatever, and, and you find a lot of them in one batch. And so then that's, you know, it kind of helps. Got the dog with me, so I got to keep track on her. If she smells something, she'll probably take off after it without letting me know. Um, and then, uh, you know, after that, I'm just going to fall into my gas detector. So this gas detector, it's pretty standard. Um, there's a couple different varieties. It's like a four gas. It's what you use on a job site. Um, I have it open right now. I typically have it taped up just to try to keep the sensors from being exposed too much. Uh, and the little cover that they come with really ain't that ideal. So um, I've never had a problem with it. I breathe in it to check it to make sure it works before I go in. Uh, depending on what the mine was used for, it, this can really be worth its weight because um, you kick up that heavy gas and uh, before you know it, you're on the ground with the rest of it and you're not getting back up. Uh, I do this alone a lot, which I would not advise anybody doing what I do, let alone doing it alone. But it's just, you know, not everyone is uh, is willing to go into a dark hole in the woods as I am. So, um following suit we, we're going to get into like specific gear here these are uh, a soft bag for an extra gopro i keep um one light two lights that double this is a camping light too has a solar power thing on the back which doesn't really charge it all that great but if you leave it in the sun all day at camp it'll give you something throughout the night um this is a, a torch a hand torch if you will it's like a thousand lumens it's got like a two three hundred yard throw um you know you can blind someone out with this pretty easy you can mess an animal up with this pretty easy and disorientate them it's got a really fast strobe light i typically keep this on my ar uh, for clearing rooms and things but um, during this time of the year i take it off to use it because it's so valuable and then uh, this is going to be an exterior charging source so like the gopro everything needs hella power so uh, this thing holds some crazy amount of man hours of power so i run it and it doubles as like a, a selfie stick thing um, and then I have this here which is a solar powered brick charger um, again the solar power doesn't work all that great it's not going to charge it super fast but it'll keep it alive uh, and I get like two or three charges for my iPhone and a couple accessories out of one good charge out of this thing uh, but I do charge it before I head out because it takes it takes a little bit uh, life straw a lot of places I go are hours and hours from rescue they're hours and hours from people sometimes um, so this is just invite if I break my ankle or something I'm gonna be out there a while so this is definitely good for that um, so going from the brick chargers and things like that and uh, you know utensils I keep them light you know plastic and I'll keep it or bamboo I have chopsticks and stuff in here I eat a lot of noodles um, hot hands just because I don't use them very often but I keep them if I ever get into a, a situation where I can't retain my heat very well or you never know you, you, I get pinched in a mine somewhere and I gotta wait for someone to figure out I'm not coming home the, it, it'll help right um, poison oak poison mm -hmm. ivy I don't always keep this in my bag but I do keep it at home it's something I want to go over because like a lot of times if you get out there in the woods whether you're scouting for animals or hunting a mine this, this stuff's all over the place out here so um, I'm pretty damn immune to it, but like still every now and then I get a couple bumps on me and it's just good to have. Here, I want you over here. Sit down. Seats him. Seats him. Um, and that'll bring me into my camp stove, typical camp stove. This one's uh, BLUU Blue as a company. It's not one of them, uh, I forget the other brand name. Uh, fast boil yeah it's not one of them but uh, cheap Amazon you can't go wrong with them it's like shit a pound and a half maybe two pounds like it, it really doesn't weigh much um, and that'll lead me into the type of food that I ty typically eat so I'm a man of chili a lot of carbs it fits in an 844 complex for my bodybuilder guys out there um, it's in can now which is a pop top can so I don't have to carry a can opener but a lot of times I'll double bag these in like a freezer bag of Ziploc and uh, it reduces a lot of the weight and then it reduces the weight for the pack out too because what you bring in you take the fuck out of there you understand me chew this is back off so this is a, a non-tobacco uh no nicotine chew it's a pouch um you get kids and stuff you know you want to start quitting that stuff i've been chewing hell since i was like 11 years old so um 
I try to fit this in, especially when I'm out there, so that way I, I find myself chain dipping a lot. And uh, the alternative solutions are always good. Back off is one that I found, um, and I, I like the company anyways. You know, the old boy that runs it and stuff seems like an all right guy. And what he's putting out doesn't taste bad. So this is the peach flavor. Um, they have ones that are natural chew form, and they're pretty consistent to like what a Copenhagen would taste like. So I like it, I don't hate it at all. Uh, cup of noodles, you can't go wrong with it. This one's in like the stupid styrofoam thing, but I'll keep the bags, um, like the regular ramen bags, um, either way. So I'm just gonna dump this in there, pour the boiling water in it, you know. Um, really just keeping the mindset of weight, because right now I'm at like, you know, 20 plus pounds, right? And then um, I have a trip coming up that'll be four miles one way. It'll take me about four hours because of the terrain, and I'll drop about 2,000 foot of elevation that first mile. Uh, which means I have to go back up that as well. So you want to keep weight in, in mind at all times. Um, no different than any other loadout you would come across. So uh, antioxidant water, vitamin water kind of stuff, this is good to have. You're going to be burning a lot of calories, a lot of energy, um, especially if you're up there in age. Like I'm, I'm a young buck, but like the older dudes that, that try to do this, man, it's, um, it's good to stay hydrated and stuff. I mean, we're in California. It's not going to be crazy hot this time of the year early spring but uh, as the season grows on the summer gets worse like it can get pretty bad um and then like going through i have a fire starter so i keep a couple packs of this uh it's like the gel stuff that you can put like in into like fibrous kindling redwood fibers whatever and it'll start burns like some 700 degrees for 10 minutes or whatever right but it's uh it was fairly cheap some of the stuff they're pretty proud of and i find that it all works the same um, and it's safe for cooking with so after you light it you can cook with it so it, um, that I found that to be useful here's a first aid port portable pack so like I get a little boo-boo or some shit I don't want to have to crack open one of my wild ass kits because uh, most of the time they're made for a mayday situation so when they open up they kind of yard sale everything they have in them so that way it's easy to attain things you don't got to go digging through pockets and uh, so I don't have to yard sale something for a small cut or laceration I can do a little boo-boo cut you know a little band-aid fix it um, this thing which always gets people's attention and raises eyebrows this is like a gardening tool I found like an ace or something and what I find is it's good for raking duff I'm going to make a bed with uh, it's good for making a little dugout if I, it's a windy night or something um, it's good for lifting rocks when you're, you're sniping for gold and stuff like that and uh, it's good for moving things out of the way uh, when you're inside of a mine as well as a, a hell of a defensive tool if it ever came down to it but ultimately, I just keep this with me because it's useful. It's kind of like having an axe or something. Um, I find there's so many uses for this. It will break apart wood and stuff, so like I can split wood with it and shit. Um, they're like solid. I couldn't even bend them out if I wanted to. I'd probably break the handle off. So, uh, And it was a couple bucks. It weighs a couple pounds. It's probably one of my heavier items for the value it, it presents. But uh, I don't hate it at all. This thing here, Bivy Tent. It's like, uh, oh, hell, does it tell me the weight? 2.79 pounds in, in total. Um, I put this on the exterior, run it on the top of the pack, and then um, it's a real quick setup. It's big enough, just big enough for me and the dog. Um, granted, if we hear something at night, we have ruined these before because she comes right through them. So it's something that you got to pay attention to. Um, but it's light, it works, it's big enough for one man, keeps me out of the elements. I used to sleep without a tent and just kind of, you know, ranger camp, if you will. But uh, getting older and stuff, you know, I kind of like not waking up soaking wet. So, you know, it um, it's just not fun waking up wet. So, that, you know, I have the game camera. Um, I just have one right now. And so, you know, when I'm scouting, I'll set this up. It'll lead me to use an on X to mark where the camera is, which is very accurate. And I'll put in the description there kind of where I put it and, and where, you know, kind of the description of where it is. And then I'll typically take a picture with my phone of it facing it and facing away from it so I can kind of orientate myself. I'm pretty good on directions, but, you know, you go and you leave it there for a few months. It's hard to remember. So after the tent, you always want to make sure you don't get lost like a lieutenant. So we have a map here. Uh, waterproof maps I still keep them in plastic and then they're inside this sheath this will stay in my cargo pocket my phone's GPS was on X will still work pretty good even when I don't have service to call which is pretty amazing 
and that thing is always really really accurate like it's always doing me pretty good when i match it back with my compass and map so the maps that i have i order them online and they're gridded with a thousand grid thousand meter grid squares for like military usage per se and then regular nautical grid squares of your um, longitude and latitudes uh, I'm not the most savvy guy with a map, but I do know how to read a topo, and so I use one. Um, not all the things that I look for, a lot of these mines aren't on these maps. A lot of mines weren't recorded. Not everyone that made a mine back in the day legally had the rights to do so. And at a certain time frame, they weren't recorded at all because there were no laws to record them. But I keep one with me. Um, you can't go wrong with it, right? Like, you should always have multiple redundancies, and this thing won't lose network it won't lose battery power I, I always have it um, and it allows me to plot my course where I want to map out where I want to be and then I can mark on it and kind of you know it's like a running log of, of the area that I'm in um, but I always suggest going out and getting a map specifically of the area like they're blown up so I have the topographical lines are very large and you can read it very easily it leaves you a lot of room to write on it and things like that which will come in really handy I don't see enough people doing this and um, it re they really should I mean you're whether you're you're going that far from the truck or not like it, it's just good to have right um, and that'll lead me to the very last thing here um, apart from like another med kit that I have on this um, which is like my big big daddy med kit multiple tourniquets chest seals i mean everything from stuff that i will likely see to things that i'll never likely see are in here and ready to go this is a steel frame pack um, and that's going to really help me adjust the weight during hunting season i carry a load carrying pack to carry the game meat out and i'll pack everything in and out on that one pack um, but for scouting and stuff i'm not carrying as much weight so I carry this thing with me. It carries just enough. And then on the inside of this, I'm sleeping bag right, which is a little bit big and obnoxious, but it's one of the smallest ones I could find at the time. I don't care to continue to buy things. So like it works, I'm practical, or I can get a new one. And the last thing I have in here are waders, and I'll just pull out one of the boot foots. So, uh, or the one of the, the stocking foots here. So it's like separate. Um, neoprene foot thing or whatever so I, I keep waders with me when i go hunting these mines because it a lot of the ones on my side of the sierras and where i'm at are wet and they start off wet and they either have a drainage problem or they ran into a water source and that's what ended up shutting the damn mine down because of the cost to run water out of it and such right it, it all plays into a count so uh, I find that like the first uh, 50 to 100 yards a lot of times are wet and can be up to like you know your chest area so um, I don't care to get that stuff on me it's really cold and then depending on how far out I am staying dry can be very vital to staying alive so I try to keep waders uh, with me and stuff that, it just helps and then if I know or suspect the mine is going to be wet I'm not going to take the dog um, I don't want her to have to deal with it and dog, a blood mine ain't a place for a dog so it's really something that um, if I have more people with me, someone that can watch her, we can go in separate times or uh, some kind of group setting, then I bring her along with me. Um, she is very vital, but uh, not always a necessity. And ultimately, guys, like that's my loadout. That's what I bring with me for the most part. Um, it'll change sometimes most importantly I don't really think I forgot much so if you guys think that I've forgotten something or you guys have something you guys carry that I don't please let me know drop it in the comments send me a message whatever um, you know because you can find me on my Facebook and, and Instagram and all that shit and I'm trying to get better at this and I think I'm doing pretty good so like let me know I mean it, I'm never one to turn down good knowledge so uh Thanks for tuning in, guys. I know it's kind of a long-winded one. There's a lot to go over here. Um, maybe in the next video, I'll talk over tactics or something like that and how I use some of this stuff. So, thanks again. I'll see you on the next adventure.